In this video, I'm going to explain what the Google Ads keyword match type options are, what they mean, and which one you should use. Using the right keyword match type is absolutely essential if you want your Google Ad campaigns to succeed. So let's get started. So here I am in an example Google Ads account, and I've gone into the keyword planner. Okay, so I'm going to click on discover new keywords, and I'm going to quickly pop in digital marketing agency in here and click on get results. And obviously you can take a look at keyword examples or that sort of stuff. But if I click on this option and I want to start targeting this specific keyword, you can see that up here, once selected, I can add it into a plan campaign, etc. But the important part for this video is this bit here. You can add it as a broad match keyword, a phrase match keyword, or an exact match keyword. And which one you select here makes a huge difference around the search terms that your ads will actually appear for. So let's go through these. So the first is broad match. And broad match is Google's default option. If you use broad match with your keywords, that's gonna give you by far the greatest reach and coverage. When you use broad match, your ads are gonna show up when someone searches for that exact term. So in this case, digital marketing agency. But it's also gonna show up for all sorts of searches that are related to the term digital marketing agency. And the thing that you often find with broad match is that Google's definition of related is often quite a bit wider, quite a bit broader than you or I would like it to be. And your ads can end up showing up for all sorts of searches that aren't that related or aren't as related as you would like them to be. And that's obviously a waste of money. That's not going to help you get the results you want from your Google ads. So let me show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So I'm in um, a campaign that we've run previously. Now this campaign was designed to get people to sign up for a survey around taking an interior design course with the intention of then them going on to um, to purchase an interior design course. Um, so if we just select one of these search terms that's entered in as a broad match, so here we've got interior design courses online, very relevant and specific to what we were offering here. If we go ahead and select this and click on search terms up here, we will see all the search terms that caused an ad to be triggered because it's a broad match keyword, okay? And you can see that some of these options are very much unrelated. So the, the, remember the root keyword here is interior design courses online, and Google thought that it was a good idea to show our ad for someone searching for home design software free. Now those things are really quite unrelated. That's someone looking for something quite different to maybe purchasing, signing up for a course online to do with interior design. Um, and that's come under the broad, that's because we're using broad match. And that's what I'm talking about when I'm saying that Google's definition related can be really quite loose. So to add a broad match keyword to your ad groups, um, if I just come out, obviously you can do it from within here, but if I come out of um, the Google keyword planner tool, then you just want to go ahead and go over to keywords, click on search keywords, obviously select the relevant campaign and ad group, and then you just enter it in here. So if we had um, interior design courses online, and we add that in, if we don't add anything around that keyword, and you'll, that'll make more sense in a second, that's gonna automatically go in as a broad match keyword. Now, if you're just getting started with Google Ads, I wouldn't recommend using broad match. Um, there are many pitfalls. It's one of the main reasons why people start, they experiment with a new Google Ads campaign and it doesn't work. It's because their ads were just showing up for all sorts of things that weren't really relevant enough to whatever it is they're offering. So I would steer clear if you're getting started, always something you can experiment with and test later on. So the next keyword match type option is phrase match. And in comparison, to broad match, this offers quite a bit more um, specificity, quite a bit more targeting. And the way phrase match works is that your ads will only be shown to searches that include your keyword. Now, you can have things put at the end, at the beginning, or things in between your keyword in terms of what the overall search is and your ad will still be shown. I'll give you an example. So let's take digital marketing agency. That's our keyword here. Now, if we were to use a phrase match uh, modifier with this, then if someone searched for digital marketing agency London or London digital marketing agency, then our ad would still be shown because it's absolutely fine to have things, as I said, before, after, or sometimes even in between, um, and, and your ad will still be shown to people searching. That's considered close enough when you're using phrase match. You'll also, your ad will also be shown if someone uses a close variant of your keyword. Um, and what that is, is typically misspellings. So if someone was to misspell one of those words and it would still be shown. Um, it could be plurals. So instead of someone searching for digital marketing agency, someone could search for digital marketing agencies. So close variants like that will also be included, which on the whole is a good thing. 
And the way you add a phrase match keyword into your Google ad campaign, into your ad group, is you just use quotation marks. So if we use our previous example of um, interior design courses online, you just pop quotation marks before and after, make sure you spell it right, and then that's gonna go in as a phrase match keyword. Then the third option is exact match. And again, this is another level higher in terms of specificity and more targeting um, in comparison to phrase match. You're sort of moving in that, in that direction. And exact match is designed to only show your ads when someone searches for your exact keyword. So if we've got the digital marketing agency example, our ad will only be shown if someone searches for digital marketing agency exactly. If someone was to search for digital marketing agency London and we're using an exact match keyword, our ad would not be shown. It's gonna exclude those searches that include things after or before or even things added in between. Again, with exact match, the default is for close variants to be included. So whilst it wouldn't, our ad wouldn't show if someone searched for Digital Marketing Agency London, it would show if we're using exact match for digital marketing agencies that sort of thing, okay? Uh, because that's considered a close variant, the same if there's misspellings and things like that. So exact match is certainly the most specific option of the three and typically where a lot of beginners get started. And you add an exact match keyword in by using square brackets, okay? So instead of um, using the quotation marks or nothing, you add in the square brackets and you are all good. That's gonna go in now as an exact match keyword. So which keyword match type option should you use when you're just getting started? I'd strongly encourage you to stay clear of broad match to begin with. I've already mentioned there's a, a bunch of issues associated with that and stick with phrase match and exact match at least to get started with. Now determining which one of those two you use, phrase match or exact match, depends on the keyword itself and how closely it describes whatever it is that you offer, your product, service, etc. If whatever it is that you're um, selling, the keyword that we're talking about in particular, almost exactly describes what that is, you can go ahead and use phrase match. Because it's often fine if people add something at the beginning, at the end, include something in the middle, that sort of stuff. Um, if the keyword you want to target is still closely related to whatever it is that you offer, but perhaps a little bit slightly further removed, then I would go with exact match because you don't want to give Google as much leeway there and then to branch out from that because you're already starting from a point that's a little bit further away from the search terms that you really want. So to give you a quick example, we might go uh, interior design courses online. Let's say that's dead on what we're offering. We're offering an interior design course online. Then we go with phrase match. And then if someone was searching for say, interior design courses without the online part, that might be exact match because we don't want that to go too far. We don't want people going for interior design courses, university or the interior design courses degree, maybe interior design courses, specific locations, because that's not really what's being offered here. You're starting to get too far away from the core offering and those searches just aren't as relevant. No matter which keyword match type option you use, you certainly want to be monitoring your search terms report very closely. Um, and that's what I've jumped into here. You can find that just under keywords and search terms on the left-hand side. And here you'll be able to see all the searches that led to your ad being displayed, being clicked on, etc. And you can go through this list and identify a couple of different things. Firstly, if there are searches here that are really good, that would be really good keywords for you to target, you think, oh, if someone's searching for that, they're highly likely to be interested in what I have to offer. Let's add that as a keyword into uh, one of our ad groups. But more importantly, you can find searches that are not relevant to what you offer, that you someone searching for that is not likely to be interested in, in what you're selling and therefore you can exclude those as negative keywords. And you, this is something that we do all the time for our clients, go through the search terms report and make optimizations based on that. So for example, if we're advertising an interior design course online and we find someone searching for home design software free, that is not a search term that we want our ads to be displayed for. We can click on home design software free and we can click you select it there, we can click add as negative keyword. You can add it in the ad group campaign or a separate negative keyword list. And you can see that what Google will do is they'll automatically add that negative keyword in as an exact match keyword. So if we go ahead and click save, that's now added as an exact match keyword. And you can see I've already done this previously and in this added slash excluded, all the excluded ones are ones that we've seen in the search terms report and then specific excluded because those aren't things that we want our ads to be displayed for. Another example here being interior design apprenticeships. 
not what we're offering here. We want to get rid of that. You can also add in negative keywords specifically. So if you click on negative keywords on the left-hand side and then click on this plus button up here and we can add negative keywords here. So you often want to add in things like free. There may be other options where you just think if anyone's searching for that, I don't want my ads to appear. If you're selling a product or service for a monetary value, not offering something free on the front end, free is a, is a good option. There are a number of others. And the way this negative keyword list works is it, it's the exact reverse of the keyword list in terms of your match types. So you can add in broad match negative keywords, you can add in um, phrase match negative keywords, and you can add in exact match negative keywords as well. When trying to decide which keyword match type to associate with your negative keywords, it's better to be on the more specific side. So most of the negative keywords that we add are going to go in as exact match, particularly if it's something quite small. And again, which keyword match type you use for your negative keywords will depend on the keyword itself. So something like free, we just want to get rid of all things associated with free if we're selling, uh, you know, something that we're actually charging money for. So we would add that in as a broad match. But if we had something like the previous example where we had interior design apprenticeships, we might pop apprenticeships in as a phrase match because we want all searches that include the word apprenticeships to be excluded. And then of course there are options that we want to just be very specific and just get rid of that particular search term um, as opposed to anything around it. So just think about the match types working in the exact same way, broad phrase exact for your next keyword list as your as your regular keywords, but obviously it's just operating reverse because these are exclusions. Using the right match type for your keywords is super important, but selecting the right option here doesn't even matter if you're not targeting the right keywords in the first place. In this video, I show you exactly how to research and find keywords that can deliver fantastic results for your Google Ad campaigns. I'd strongly recommend you go ahead and check it out.